Uh, I have been practicing Kung Fu for 13 years. I have been climbed in Holland something like 13, 14 times, I would say. Do you feel like Kung Fu helps you to climb harder? It helps you with the conditioning, I would say. So I remember the first time I met Olavo, he was already doing a 7A on his first day. So Kung Fu helps you with conditioning, finger strength? Uh, we train the animal forms, because palms, like a tiger palm, which is there. Yeah, that's probably the most famous one it would be for, for Kung Fu. It's kind of like you, you curl your fingers like this. Uh-huh. Yeah, tip toes. And then you're going to do push-ups like that. You have monkey fists, which is the opposite, with the knuckles. Okay. Yeah. Have a leopard fist, which would be like that. Crane. Crane. Yeah. You go merging like that. That's a crane pick. Yeah. Even you have a brain months. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. So in Kung Fu, they attack people with their fingers like this. A lot of yeah, pushing movements. Did you do any movements where you, where you pull with your fingers, like in climbing? Well, we did a little bit of, uh, let's say, a pull-up. I would say a finger pull-up. You did finger pull-ups in Kung yeah. Fu? How, how many fingers? Uh, we can go up to the, down the way to one. That's really applicable to climbing. So now I'm starting to understand why you did so well on your first session. So I did martial arts for over 10 years as well. And I don't have iron fingers at all. Uh, I grew up in a farm. So we did a lot of hand works. Okay. I was a mechanic, so it's a lot of hand work. So when I started training the, the Kung Fu grip strength, I already had some conditioning. I mean, anyone can do it, anyone can achieve. Yeah. It's you just you need different, yeah, different, uh, different uh, steps. Okay. Don't start straight away from the ground, tiger like push-ups, clap in the chest. And that's something we were discussing before. A lot of people see like the iron fist training and then they also try to do it. That's not good. And there's people who have deformities, like it can really mess you up. Don't do it without guidance. Uh, one thing I really like about Olavo, look at his posture. You can just see by the way he's standing that this whole chain is connected. When he punches, he's not just punching with his hand. He can punch with his whole body. And when I look at climbers, a lot of people are like this. There's a disconnect. And I think that's one thing we can also learn from Kung Fu, to have a good base. Yeah, everything starts with the base actually. The first posture you're going to learn in Kung Fu is it's called the horse riding stance. You're going to see in the movies where they're holding the pots of water like this. A pot of water balancing in the head. Another one here, another one here, and here, and you're going to stay there. In the style of Kung Fu that's called the Hungar, you're going to train three years like this. So you spend three years working on your posture, yeah. on your base, on routing. And that's when you start learning strikes. Then you're gonna start learning technique. In climbing, the first thing we do is climb, <laughs> and we don't even bother with technique until we reach a plateau. So it's completely upside down. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's the thing with Kung Fu. If you're learning, your teacher is gonna tell you, this is a tiger claw, right? And you do a tiger claw like this, it's not the same. The forms are really corrected to perfection. So you focus that's on right. mastery from the beginning. Yeah. And that's interesting. In climbing, quite often, we just wanna to get to the top, but if we have the Kung Fu mindset, we want to get to the top with perfect technique. Yeah, pretty much, I would say, yeah. We're not caring much to get to the top. When I'm climbing here, I don't care much. You know, it's just, it's just the challenge of that, to that moment to be doing that, it's, it's just incredible. Even if I just move the first piece, yeah. it's enough. So you're focusing on the mastery of every movement. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, one thing we do, it's called the one-step one fighting. Uh, launch one attack, and you know exactly how to defend that. So you punch with that hand, I'm going to show you a crane movement. Okay. Right? That's the peak of the crane, like that, like I said, technique. I'm going to wrap around your arm, I'm going to loop your arm there. Well, that's the back of the crane, and I'm going to hit you here. Lightly, in the train, you're never going to hit high. Yeah. Right? I'm going to pass under you, I'm going to take your arm away there. And there, again, I push it away, and I'm gonna hit you right. <laughs> you had one attack, you said. Yeah, yeah. Those were three. Yeah, it's just a fluid movement, it's quite fast. Oh, it's actually. one movement. Yeah. You know exactly what's gonna happen to you. Uh -huh. I know exactly what we're gonna do. So, it's not a combat. We'll develop your memory. Yeah. Right? You're gonna develop that. Once you, you develop that, you're gonna be to a point where if I do that, you close your eyes because you could hurt your eyes. It's automatic, you didn't think yeah. of it. So it's gonna be the same. I do that, and you train Kung Fu long enough, you're gonna be like, poof, poof, yeah. and you did it. Yeah, you exactly. didn't even think of it. So in Japanese martial arts, we often call that mushin, the, the state of no thought, where you're not distracted, you're not thinking about one thing, you're not stuck, 
you're accepting whatever's coming your way and you do the response without thinking. Yeah. So this is one of Olavo's secret techniques toward finger strength. This is for Achilles. It's a way too heavy for a beginner. Way, way too heavy, right? Okay. Get a bottle of water, small bottle of water. So you don't grab the edges there, because then you're kind of like cheating. Yeah. And then you're going to go and train that. This also trains something called contact strength, where you grab and immediately put a lot of force into it. So this could be a good exercise, actually. I would say, yeah. I would say yeah. one exercise is nice to do. <coughs> this is too heavy. And too once, heavy. once you're doing it, it's important you, your arm's here. Uh-huh. There. Okay, Come like a punch. Here. Yeah. Come back forward. It's kind of a travel speed, you see? You're far away from it. Yeah, it's a nice train. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> okay. We do it in a horse riding stance, so you also have to hold the horse riding stance very low like this. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you know what, it's a, it's a good thing to train with this, very nice, very safe. Get a, a, a little bag, fill it up with sand, the, because the sand is not uh, solid, uh -huh. so it moves. So you also, when, when you grab it, it's not so easy. You, you're also doing this squishing movement here, yeah. which is uh, developing more the muscles as well. With the bag of sand, you can do this as well. Throw it here and grab it. One hand, yeah. You loop it around, so you develop in torsion as well. And grab with this one, torsion, grab with this one, or grab. So a lot of people, when they climb, they're not stable. They bring their sh shoulders up, and it's just not strong. So you want to be able to have your shoulders engaged. You want to have your wrists to be able to uh, deal the force of holding uh, a sloper, for instance. And I feel like not a lot of climbers train their wrists. Not a lot of climbers train their shoulders, and they should. You should do it from day one. Have strong shoulders, have strong wrists. From the Shaolin monks, when they're gonna go training four, hour, four o'clock in the morning, they run uphill on uh -huh. the steps, and they come up the steps with the hands, like that, rolling down. Down, down steps. It takes many years practicing. But things like this. Uh, you go in a handstand in a wall, and do handstand push-ups. Handstand push-ups are really hard. And I think a lot of climbers have started doing handstands because it's great for balance, it's great for the shoulders. You're pushing instead of pulling the whole time, so it's a good corrective exercise as well. Do you have anything for the shoulder that you used to do? Uh, we do the weights, long arms. Mm -hmm. mm. Moving all the way with a really long arm, so this is the shoulder. Like I told you, uh, uh, holding the pots of water. Yeah. And it's holding for time. That's important as well in Kung Fu, holding your stance there. Even if you're feeling a lot of pain, you hold that stance for a long time. So you, long you train your mind as well as the yeah. body. So one of the worries I have with you specifically, because the first day I saw him climb here, that was his first time climbing, he was already doing a 7A, that's a V6. I'm worried, maybe he has stronger fingers than uh, his ligaments can carry. If you're a physio, then please comment below and let us know. Uh, from, from our training, we know how much we can take it. Okay, so basically because of the experience that Kung Fu yeah. has with hardening fingers, you're not worried about your fingers. You no, think not at it all. can handle yeah. it. You should handle my body weight, no problem. I told about you on some forums and on Reddit and on Facebook, and a lot of people are super interested to hear about you. And one of the questions was about safety. Did you do any exercises in Kung Fu for safety so that you don't get injured? Yeah, then it comes down to the stretching and the warming up. Properly, that's very important. That's one thing that I think is a very, very much key for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stretching is very important. Like I said, one ligament that could be shorter than the others, right? You gotta get everything at the same length. Yeah, that's why we do these crazy splits and stuff like that. Bridges and... It's not just for show, it has a purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so one thing I noticed when you climb is that sometimes you're super relaxed and sometimes I can just see your whole body tensing up. How did you learn to have body tension like that? That was the postures. Holding the, the postures. Yeah, holding the postures. Can you show us? Many people are going to try to copy this. And you're probably going to copy wrong without guidance. You need someone to watch you and tell you exactly what you're doing. Because it's very specific. My back is straight, you see? And uh, just by doing this, many people have the body so out of balance they will fall back. And then from there we're going to go to... Uh, this is the archer's stance. When you throw an arrow, you should push it forward. Yeah, really strong. Yeah. Yeah. So you're really solid here. When I was doing martial arts, a lot of people hurt their knees because they did these holds and they did it wrong. Yeah. So I like what you said. Don't just copy. No, Make sure you have a teacher. Yeah, it's very important to have a teacher. There's someone that will guide you properly. The person with a lot of experience, they can look at it and they can say, okay, you're not flexible enough for this exercise yet. We're going to get you there. 
Uh, what, but what kind of exercises do you have specifically for coordination or specifically for balance? People that are older and often think uh, Karate Kid. Remember Karate Kid on the thing? <laughs> and so that's a crane stance. Uh -huh. So you are here. And actually in the movie Karate Kid did it wrong. You should be able to jump with this foot, kick, kick with it. it with it and land it back. Okay. Form of fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing we're going to practice. Not in a soft ground like that. It's not very yeah, it's hard to jump. Cool. So the crane could be useful. I notice a lot of climbers do yoga. The difference is that in yoga you don't have the explosive movements. So I think maybe Kung Fu could be a little bit better at this because you have the balance, but you have to move quickly from there. So it mimics a bit more a dyno or a dead point in climbing. But one thing I notice is that when you climb, you're on a different level than most people there. Like I feel most people that climb, they're distracted or all they want to do is get to the top. I asked you, remember? Brushing the stone with the thing? I said, like, is that, that for me is cheating. And another thing is if the course is gonna start from here, some people start it together and then they got a bit tired and they start from the middle to, f to try to finish. You're never gonna see a, uh, someone that trained Kung Fu do this. We'd never start from the middle. We're gonna start from there every single time. And why is that? Because that's how it's supposed to be. It's the same with the forms of Kung Fu. That's a very important step to move from here to there. First, you must move from there. This old Chinese saying, a baby before he walks, you must crawl, right? It's the same, I must start from here. Yeah. And I, think, top. I think this is where climbing and Kung Fu is gonna clash. He said, that's not how it's supposed to be. And that's very interesting because in climbing, I feel like we're all rebels. We all invent our own way. Uh, and I noticed that with you, you try to find the way. And that's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. No brushing this time. No brushing. If, if it's uh, dirty, if, if it's, it's dirty, dirty doesn't matter. deal with it. Yeah. Others, but what do you want to focus on now to get better at climbing? Technique, I would say. Mm -hmm. That lacks for me a lot. Yeah. It's like I try to do something and it doesn't work. And then you say to me, move your leg like that and like that. And then suddenly it's so easy. Do you have a plan for that? How are you going to learn it? I learn by observing a lot. I sit here and I follow you guys on Instagram. And I see when you, when you guys are here, how you're doing that. And I just uh, watch it. So when he's climbing and he's sitting down and looking around, he's not just resting. He's actively paying attention and learning new techniques. Yeah, I think I found with the climbers that's very nice. They're very friendly. Yeah. And then they say, how'd you do that? They're very happy to show you how they do that. You know? And then for us, this is very, it's like free knowledge. Yeah, Olavo, I'm so happy that you've joined the climbing community. I can imagine there's going to be more questions. If you have them, ask them below and I'll ask Olavo to answer them. Uh, I got you a little gift because every time you climb, you lose a lot of skin. Yes. So let's get you some skin maintenance. This is so that it heals. Oh, thank you. Okay. And this is to get rid of the extra skin and it's going to help you climb on bad skin days. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.